Sorry, folks. I'm just. We're recording. Okay. Go ahead. I got to find the stupid thing to read. All right. Uh, Seeing I, the present, good morning. Seeing the present of the quorum, I'm going to ca call the June 7th, 2023 meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to order. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the uh, Acts of 2022, and ex extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately ex access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, with that, I'm going to call on each member to make sure they can hear and be heard. Uh, Lynn Griesmer. Present. Mandy Johanneke. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. And I'm present. Michelle Miller is absent. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move very quickly into um <laughs> I don't even remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been I didn't even get home till two o'clock in the morning, so I'm kind of um I, I, what I want to do is get our appointments for finance committee resident non-voting resident members. Uh, I have not received, uh, as far as I can find in my email, any new CAFs. Um, I know that Tracy Zafflin uh, was hoping that uh, Jeff, and I'm going to say Davis, but I'm not sure if that's his last name right now, would because she thought he was interested and she was contacting him directly and I've received nothing from him. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is, and I need all your help, um, we have two strong candidates who have been on the finance committee. They've, they've been new CAFs, et cetera. Um, and I would like to call the pool sufficient at this time so we can move forward with their reappointment. Um, but I, I would like opinion from the group, all of you. Uh, and also, if that's true, uh, and I probably know the answer to this because it's a government and we have to do everything in an awkward way. Um, if we say the pool is sufficient, do we need more things from them? Do, or could we actually go directly to a vote? Mandy. So, <laughs> You could do it through many votes at the town council. Um, so we could declare the pool sufficient. I almost almost thought I heard a motion from Pat to do so. Um, yeah, yeah. That if she made it, I would second it. Um, <laughs> um, once the pool is sufficient, you're supposed to move on to under the policy. So this is the issue. There's a town council policy. Yeah. Um, so you can you're supposed to move on to soliciting statements of interests and moving to interviews, which is then adopting selection criteria, making interview questions okay. and all of that to follow the full policy. If you, if the committee desires not to follow that policy, what it needs to do is ask the council to waive its policy, whatever sections you want waived. And it maybe you could do it in one motion, waive the, waive the, you know, the, sections X, Y, Z of the town council policy on making recommendations in order to directly appoint um, X and Y as with that. And then the next motion would be to recommend appointment, um, skipping everything else. Both motions would have to be going to the council. I believe the first one would have to be affirmatively approved in order to do the second. I think yeah. that's accurate. Okay, so it is possible, okay. Lynn? You know, the only thing I would, um, I'm sorry, the only thing I would <clears throat> adjust on that motion or, or in that statement is to reappoint because yeah. both of them are presently on the finance right. committee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we just have to decide, are we reappointing for a three-year term or what are we appointing for? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think the, um, I, I think the, Finance committee appointments are two-year terms. Yeah. Not three-year. 
under the charge. We'd have to look at the charge, but I think the charge I'm is pretty sure. terms. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. And um, one candidate uh, would be serving a final term because it would equal six years. And the other candidate had re was a replacement for one year. Jennifer? Yeah, I just want to, you know, reiterate what Lynn said. The reappointment is what's important. We wouldn't we wouldn't do this for candidates who would never serve. Absolutely them. not. Absolutely not in any way, shape, or form. And it just feels to me like we have the June 30th deadline. The candidate the re, uh, candidates have already sent us all this material. They've already been interviewed. They've already been working. And this feels like an exception. It really does feel like an exception. So I would like to move forward with that. When is the next council meeting? It's this coming Monday? Yeah, the 12th. Okay, and so um, Mandy, can I ask you to write up the motions that we'll need? I was just gonna ask if you want me to make the motions yeah. in yes. consecutive we order here. Make them now and then also write them up for, so that we can get them to, you know, whatever needs to go to the council, if you don't mind. And I, I I'm fine. I, I think I'm gonna be three motions, Athena. The, Go Lynn, ahead. Before I start making them, do you want to make a comment? Your hand is raised, Lynn. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at the terms, and uh, I just wanted to see if we could agree on that before we make the motion. Um, that right now, Bob Hagner uh, came on in 2019, and I can't remember whether he was appointed for a one-year term and then a three-year term. And so the question will be. I, I don't know. Maybe he had two two-year terms. Maybe that was what it was. I'm pretty sure he's had two two-year yeah. terms, Lynn. Yeah. So he would be another two-year term. Yeah, that would be that would cover the four. And Matt Holloway term. would be another two-year term. Okay, yeah. great. That's all yeah. I want to straighten out. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. I'm 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 looking up the charge itself. So because that's where the it charge says it. the charge is two years for non-voting member. Yep. Yeah. That's what it says. So so okay. So, so you make the motions, I'll second them. There will be three. <laughs> the first one is to declare the applicant pool for the appointment of non-voting members to the finance committee sufficient. So, okay, second, DeAngelis, and let's take a vote on that. Griesmer? Aye. Haneke? Aye. Taub? Yes. And I'm an I. Thank you. Next. The next is to recommend the town council waive the sections four. Hold on, I got to read what section five is. <laughs> Take your time. I appreciate what you're doing. Four, six, seven, eight and nine of the town council policy on making recommendations for town council appointments to multiple member bodies uh, for the purposes of reappointing two applicants to the as non-voting members of the finance committee. Second, DeAngelis. And let's take a vote on that. I so can I wait. can explain. I can explain why I skipped certain sections. Okay. Good. Well, sections one, that. two, and three are complete. They are vacancy, CAF, and sufficiency of the applicant pool. So we've actually completed those. So we don't have to okay. wait. Them. Section six. No. Section five cool. is the section on reappointments. So that's just more of a. That's kind of what we're doing. But um, and section ten is the appointment recommendations. Okay. Which we're going to make. So. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Jennifer, you had your hand up. Yeah. Uh, just, um, and we will explain to the council while we're doing this, if it's. Absolutely. And yeah. And, and, and really emphasize that this is an exception. Um, yeah. Yeah. Would and a lot like of outreach do that? done to get more applicants. As a, a co-chair, would you like to do that? I'm happy to, sure. Okay. Jennifer <laughs> right. did a great job on Monday, Pat. I'm sure. GOL report. <laughs> right. Well, she should be chair. No, no. Uh, she has my vote. <laughs> We're in good hands. 
<laughs> no, I, I, no, I think it would be good if you, if you did that, if you don't mind it. And it really is finding some way to share some of this stuff. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to how you're going to present it, et cetera. Okay. Uh, did we vote on that one? No. Not yet. Okay. But it's been moved and seconded. Yes. All right. Um, Haneke. Aye. Taub. Yes. Reesmer. Aye. And D'Angelo says aye. So it's four in favor, one absent. Okay. Mandy? Um, I move to recommend. Oh, hold on. I actually have a document that I can read. Um, that the town council appoint. Reappoint. Sorry, reappoint Robert Hegner and Matt Holloway as um, non-voting resident members to the finance committee for terms effective July 1, 2023 and ending June 30, 2025. Okay, second, DeAngelis. And let's go for a vote on that. Jennifer? Uh, yes. Uh, Lynn? Aye. Mandy? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's again, I don't need to repeat that or do I for the tape? Okay. All right, uh, that, feels, that feels very good and it feels important to me. Um, so, all right, let's see where we're going. I guess what I'd like to look at real, it, I don't know if it's a quick look, but when I went back to work on the bylaws for future, you know, the things we've been passing on and on and on, it was very interesting to see that some at times this committee has voted and then nothing uh, uh, that I could follow in the history changed anything. Um, so I'd like to, I tried in the memo to um, be clear about some of the things we want to do. And the, so I, so, I know, Lynn, you didn't want to do this piecemeal. You wanted to bring it all together. And yeah. in my report, I did not integrate Paul's. We, I kept it as a separate report and there it is looking at separate, different bylaws, but go ahead, Lynn. It, it was just a an option rather than do it piecemeal oh, yeah. to just get it all ready and then take it to the council on one night. Yeah, yeah. and it, there's uh, legitimate reasons for doing that. My concern is this has just been pushed and pushed. And even the things that I brought to Paul and he's now working on, we've been asking for this since 2019. Now, are you talking about the bylaws or are you talking about the, the rules of procedure? Bylaws. I'm sorry, either That's one, a, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I have my... Uh, Sadie's brother is staying here and he's staying in this room. He's not here, but his phone seems to be playing music in the background. So I don't know where it is. So, so I guess, what Jennifer? We can't hear it. Okay, good, good. All right, so one of the things I had wanted to do is integrate Paul's, um, but I, I can, some of these I can give you an update on and, the, and that in, also includes like snow and ice. I can give you, very quick, that's been sent to the town attorney via Paul. Um, and we've also, um, I've sent, sent the flag policy and the uh, public way changes, uh, both of them again to the uh, town, uh, to the law firm. So, but they have not, I have not seen anything back yet on that. We had gotten some feedback uh, but we're trying to do that all together. So that's the update on that. Uh, what else? Uh, Pat. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. I, uh, I'm really out of it. So yeah, no, I understand. So I let apologize. Me, let me try to uh, yeah, work. Please, work. because I'm really tired. It seems to me like we have three bylaws that we are actively talking about. One is the snow and ice and obstruction. Mm -hmm. The second is the public way and then the flag. Yep. And I think we should place a priority on trying to get those done, not necessarily today, but sometime, maybe in time to bring it to the June 24th. 20, yeah, and that's dependent when we get the, the legal review back. And, okay. you know, 
I can email Paul again and say we really need it by the in time for the 24th. And I think Lauren is um, beginning to be a little more freed up because town yeah. meetings are yeah. almost all over. She was really jammed with town meetings. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, no, can, no shame or blame on her. Right. Th then we have two other kind of long term things that if we can, you know, if we can move to trying to get them done in the July and the August meeting. One is the bylaws and the other one is the rules of procedure. Right. And both of those, we were going to try to do everything at once, not both, not both at once, but all the rules of procedure at once and all the bylaws at once. And so if I, I think if we shoot for a July meeting for one of them and, an, and the August meeting for the other, um, okay. That works. How so does that, that sounds to people. It sounds good to me. Yeah. And um, the, is there a preference about whether it's rules and procedure in July or August? Okay. All right. Yeah. And all right. Uh, so, what would you? That kind of takes quite a bit of the agenda off the table in a certain kind of way. We could go to. Uh, review and recommendations now of rules of procedure, or we can look at the bylaws. So again, I would love feedback from you guys about that. Lynn? I think we got feedback on snow and ice. Legal and feedback on that? We did. We did. And, and when so did that come minor, in? Pretty minor. It's pretty minor. And so I wonder if we want to finish that up today, if we can. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, Jennifer, are you comfortable with that? Because, okay. I thought there was only two places where Lauren had a comment. Yeah. One was waste disposal contain waste containers. Okay, and she has a question for uh, waste containers must be removed. And, and I think she didn't. Is it that she was questioning the term waste container, like? trash cans are literally might is that the issue or i don't know i don't know i have not seen her memo per se other than these comments i haven't yeah i've only seen these comments i haven't seen a memo yeah mandy yeah so a couple things i think she was just questioning what is a waste container so better definition which i've got a, a suggested language for um great I wonder if we could use containers for waste hauling collection. It's kind of wordy, but say it again. Containers for waste hauling collection. Yeah, that's pretty clear. Yeah. Hey, do we have consensus on that change? Okay, good. Keep going, Mandy. Um, I think her other th comment about the brace of materials was just a clarification of, um, I think she was suggesting language to better explain what or otherwise means, um, yeah. and I kind of okay. like her language. Um, okay. The only other thing I had was when she changed from all of the timings from the wording within X hours or days of its accumulation, for example, the first one within 24 hours of its accumulation to no later than 24 hours. I feel like the ofs need changed because it just seems the wording reads weird to me. And I don't know whether it's just me. It shall be removed no later than 24 hours of its accumulation on the sidewalk. That just sounds weird. Mm -hmm no later than 24 hours after its accumulation. Yeah. And I found three spots where the word of might need change to after. Um, in number two, there's a no later than 24 hours after the obstruction occurring, that one. Mm -hmm. And then three lines later, no later than 10 days after receiving a notice to remedy. I think I think there's one more up in one in the first two lines. Oh, she didn't catch one. Aha. The owner, whether by natural accumulation, or otherwise, <laughs> the owner shall remove. So that one should read no later than 24 hours after the end. 
Yeah, thank the you. Precipitation. Yeah. Good catch, Lynn. Okay, anything else? And do we have consensus on those changes? Okay, so I'm gonna move that we recommend to the town council the uh, to rescind, right? And repeal. <laughs> rescind and repeal. No, was uh, it repeal and replace? Rescind and oh. replace or repeal and replace? I don't care which. And the committee's the, the thing, committee's right? okay with all these other changes, correct? Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Athena. So, uh, what are I, <laughs> go ahead, Mandy? Can you bring the motion? Oh. I'm sorry, I really should. <laughs> I, I move to recommend the town council rescind bylaw three point four zero snow and ice and replace it with three point four zero obstruction of public ways and snow and ice removal as amended at the June 7th, 2023 GOL meeting. Is there a second? Second. Lynn. Lynn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, do Jennifer. I didn't speak. Well, I was just seconding. Good, thank you. Okay, we'll take a vote on that. And I'm an aye, Mandy. Aye. Lynn? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so if you guys keep running this meeting, we'll actually get somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Athena will put that on the agenda for Monday the 12th. Yes. And that'll, that'll be a first reading or do we need for to do- A first read. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And bring it. And since it's a rescind and replace, it means Athena, you can just accept all the changes here to present a clear copy, right? Yeah. Oh, great, good. But it would be useful. Oh boy, do we even have something that shows what we changed over time? Well, we have oh. the original bylaw, and then and we'll we have, have this clean document. We're going to rescind the the existing bylaw okay. and replace it all with right. this clean document. So, Got I it. mean, we have all these track change documents for our own yeah. reference. But all we need to show the council is the the existing and and what it would be replaced with. Got it. Let's let's go with it. Okay. Mandy, your hand is still up. Oh, sorry. Well, no, that's all right. All right. Is there so do we want to start looking at the bylaws? Mm -hmm. or... Don't don't we need to vote? Or did oh. we vote? I thought we did. We voted. Okay, got it. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, that was a big accomplishment. <laughs> <Yeah>, finally. <laughs> no, but, yeah. How long? <laughs> <laughs> but it's important. It's a it's a bylaw that affects people, you know. Yes, it does. Daily. It's very important. I'm not laughing at the bylaw. <laughs> just some how long it can take to do what seems simple. Um, so I, I I guess I wouldn't mind looking beginning to look at some of the updates uh, on disposition of bylaws. Um, if that is where you folks would like to go. And that's I, fine with me doing bylaws. That works for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to take them in order. Um, well, I'm going to jump. I said I'm going to take them in order, but bylaw 3.15 activities and amusements. We really, we already voted. We, <laughs> we recommended to the council on, on March 17th, 2021 to rescind this bylaw, but I don't know if it was rescinded because it's still in the 2020, and that's, I've been working with the um, bylaws from 2021. So um, so if, so is there a way to check whether that's already been rescinded? Is there a newer version of And I, I, I'm looking now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't see, um, I, I briefly looked at the agendas for the meetings three months within the three months of that, and I didn't see it on any of those agendas. Yeah. And I yeah. had thought we had done it, but maybe it was something else we did. Well, it could be that we recommended it and then it didn't get to the council, but that doesn't seem, you know, I guess that could have been a GOL error. Um, or maybe it was done later. 2021 
maybe it was done in like December with a whole host because that was the last council. Yeah. Um, it, it's in the in the general bylaws. Um, the number is still in there for some reason, but it says yeah. rescinded 12, 13, 21 by town council. So it's okay. been it's been rescinded. OK, great. So that's. And um, what's the date on that, Athena? It was rescinded, I think, 12, uh, December 13, 2021. OK. All right. Uh, well, then let's go to 3.2, which is a special board of appeals. Um, I believe that this can be repealed uh, because it, I went into the zoning bylaws. I went into 10.1. And there is, uh, uh, does not reference um, chapter 41, um, but it seems to cover the same issues um, or, you know, so I don't believe this is necessary. And so I'm not sure why it hasn't been deleted. So if anybody else has any input on that. I went back and looked at some of George's notes and stuff like that and couldn't find anything. Sorry, should we look at bylaw? It, I, I think, went into, go ahead. Could you put the document up, Athena? Which document? The document on bylaws. The one that I, the one that we're looking at. <clears throat> Right now, you still have snow and ice up there. Yeah, that's the one. All right. So my question on the one that we're talking about, which is um, uh, 3.2.1. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Now, where am I? Uh, special special board of appeals. My, my special question board. is, has anybody looked at 10.1 of the zoning bylaw? I looked at it this morning and I it it does not reference um where is the damn bylaw? Chap chapter 41, section 81Z. Yeah, it doesn't reference it. Um, but I don't know if it needs to. So I think it would need to. Okay. So, so it, it, go ahead. Yeah, so here's what chapter 41, section 81Z reads in it's part. It. I'll just read the in part part because it's two paragraphs long. Yeah, um, yeah. A city or town in which the subdivision control law is in effect shall by ordinance or by law provide for a board of appeals, which shall have jurisdiction to issue a permit for the erection of a building under section 81Y. Such Board of Appeals may be the existing Board of Appeals under the local zoning or building or zoning ordinance or bylaw, and then it goes on about other things. Um, the mayor or selectman shall appoint the members of the Board of Appeals um, within adoption of the ordinance. That's newly established, though. So I think if we amend the zoning bylaw, maybe I have to look at 10.1, but yeah. Or this one could we could amend this general bylaw. What's the easiest? It does seem to me that because it pertains to zoning uh, and the zoning board of appeals, why aren't we just moving the information about 81Z to that to 10.1? So I actually think given the language of 41 section 81Z, 3.2 is fine. It, leaving it in? Yeah, it literally says the Board of Appeals established under the zoning bylaw shall act okay. as the Board of Appeals under MGL chapter 41 section 81Z. So okay. this is the zoning Board of Appeals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's as basic as it needs to be and is fine. Okay. So, so one decision is to leave it as is and leave it in the general bylaws, which in, in some instances is the simplest thing to do. Um, but I think that it needs to get reported on because it's been carried for so long. 
Um, and what do other people think? Pat, I think that it would be useful if we have two different documents here. One document is the original list with something that talks about its disposition, okay? Yeah. And then the other documents would be the actual bylaws that we're going to change. And those will be a multiple sets of documents okay. if we change any. So I would keep, and you're absolutely correct. This has been out there for so long. Even, I mean, there's only seven of us from the original council that knew about this list. So um, let's, um, I don't know, have somewhere yeah. each of these in italics and um, bold talk about disposition and okay. so forth. Okay. So uh, an example would simply be for bylaw 3.15. It was rescinded in 1213, da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, okay. And so are we in agreement about keeping 3.2 where it is as it is? Jennifer? Yeah, um, yeah. I, what I want to ask is it sounds like what it's doing in the general bylaw, it's referring to the zoning bylaw, which is fine, but should we call it zoning board of appeals? I know that would be an amendment instead of just board of appeals. I actually found that a little confusing. I thought are there two different. Ah, okay. That seems like a fine change to me and one that we can agree to quickly. I agree with that. Okay. Um, is it called the Zoning Board of Appeals in our zoning bylaw? Or is that just sort of what we call it? Hello, uh, let me, I can check. Who's checking? I will, I'm, I have the zoning bylaw open. Okay. I'm just trying to see where it would be. Page 100. Okay. Yeah. It was gonna get there. Right. Oh, it does say the zoning board of appeals shall consist of. Yeah, so we're okay, you know. So we should make that change. But yet section 10.1 says appeals to the board of appeals may be taken by. Well, I think we should make that consistent everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So I, it, it's promulgated by the Board of Appeals. So the the ZB, the bylaw, the zoning bylaw refers to it multiple times as Board of Appeals. But then it also has Zoning Board of Appeals. Just that in the first two sentences of 10.01, but in the last sentence, the last two sentences say Boards of Appeals. Yeah, I find that whole thing confusing. I'm all for keeping it easy and not amending anything, less work for the council. Section 10.1 says board uses just board of appeals. I guess the question I continue to have is whether or not we need 3.2. I think we do. Okay. It's because certainly... otherwise, so chapter 41, MGL chapter 41, section 81Z says, you you have to provide for a board of appeals if you've accepted this subdivision control law or if that subdivision control law is in effect. I have no idea whether the subdivision control law is in effect, but assuming it is, we have to provide for a board of appeals. And so and and we have to do that by ordinance of or by law. And so we have to mention it somewhere according to this law. The question is, is the subdivision control law in effect? I don't know. What is a subdivision control law? <laughs> we don't is, know. Does that mean the town has some control over the subdivision? Don't know. I think we're making this harder than we need to. I'm wondering if we couldn't say special board of appeals, AKA zoning board of appeals in 3.2, something like that. So okay, that's that, fine for me. I think there should be some reference to zoning board. Yeah, of that's what, we call what it. I that's hear you saying. Yeah. 
And the simple, yeah. And because the uh, zoning bylaw references both, it's they're saying these are equivalent definitions. But here, I think Jennifer's right that we should change it. Um, So if people want to change it, I'll make a motion. Make a motion. Um, I move to recommend the town council add the phrase parens zoning board of appeals and parens after the words zoning special by law after the first instance of the words zoning by law in general by law 3.2. Okay. Second. <laughs> so, so Athena, what that what I'm trying to get at is the bylaw would read 3.2 would read the Board of Appeals established under the zoning bylaw parentheses zoning Board of Appeals and parentheses shall act as the Board of Appeals. Yeah. It's just zoning bylaws reference is, is used twice in the same sentence. So shall we take? Has the motion been made and seconded? I made uh, it. Yes, okay. I seconded. And let's just vote. Yeah. Griesmer? Yes. Taub? Yes. Haneke? Aye. And I'm an aye. Such unanimity. Okay. Um, yeah, the next one we already did. Right. Uh, 321, which is uh, regulations relating to animals. Uh, and what I can do uh, will be to contact Carol Hepburn to see if she wants to add the, and see again, this was the recommendation that was made and somehow or other all this got lost. So I'll, but I'll do that. So we will come back to that one. You're on three, two, one. Yes, please. yes, I'm sorry. And I will contact Carol Hepburn to get input on that. Let's just make a note of that uh, so we can keep this as a record. Right. So, Pat, to. It's in the recommendation that, yeah, but you can just note that I'll be doing it. Okay. I thought we did peeking and peering. It's still on the books. Yeah, without we drones. Done it too. It, what or maybe we didn't we finish but this is about drones and when i went into the 2021 bylaws it doesn't mention drones and it what it's saying is to refer this to the appropriate committee for review and i'm trying to figure out whether or not that's tso or or is that simply i mean it was re referred to gol obviously but yeah, um, it's literally one sentence long, the bylaw. Yeah. Um, and I think it was if we want to get into it, it probably needs to go to a different committee. The question is, does the council want to get into it? Yeah, we need to. And and I feel like we got something from the chief on this at one point, like maybe a couple of years ago on his thoughts on it. And that right. might have been why it stalled, because I'm looking at the bylaw, except as otherwise permitted by law, no person upon the property of another shall intentionally peep or peer into the place of habitation of another. So you have to be on that person's property first. Right. And the question is, with Jones and all, you can be standing in the public way. Right. Lynn? Controlling it. I, yeah, I, I'm of two minds. One is, if somebody wants to take this on, that's great. I I have reason to believe that it should go beyond what, whether you're on that person's property, 
I'm bluntly, we've had a situation up in Flathills Road where there's somebody that keeps stopping and kind of scanning with a radar, a, a satellite dish, and we're not, we've reported it. Several neighbors have reported it. We have no idea what they're up to. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's so, but they're not on our property when they do it. They're just on the main road. And so it's a surveillance of some level. We have no idea what it is. And the police have not been able to um, come up with an answer. So yeah, it just, uh, it does need to go for a much more big, bigger discussion about surveillance. Okay. So not just drones, but also being off personal uh, with someone's property. Um, not just drones, but also um, other technolog technologically surveillance kinds of mechanisms, because this person's not using a drone. Hmm. Okay. Um, is this the committee that should be doing that? Or should it be TSO? I mean, I can't think it doesn't belong in CRC, I don't believe. So, so are we making a recommendation to look at the issue of surveillance and surveillance technology in regard to this bylaw? Yeah, could, we make for, make, yeah, could we make that recommendation that in the, in the coming term, not this term, the, G, the TSO look at it because I, at TSO has so much on their plate. I just don't see them getting done. So I think that becomes the question, right? Um, if you're looking at a massive expansion, so it's not peeping or peering into a place of habitation, right? Um, it's something else with other technology. You're looking at probably a year long process. And the question becomes, it's not going to get done this term. Is it the high, is it a high enough priority for the council to take up, you know, what could be done if this count, if our current term is not going to take it up, GOL could recommend that the council, right now it's referred to GOL, right? Um, right. That, that the council refer it to TSO and then under our automatic carryover, it get carried over for the next council to determine priority, something like that, where yeah. therefore it's not lost, but it's not deemed by this council a priority for the next council. It just- I agree with it. It's counted somewhere. I agree with all of that. Okay. Lynn, did you want to add something beyond the agreement? So as I heard it, we're we're saying that we think it belongs in TSO, but it would be, it's going to be an extensive process. And so it should be taken up by the council as to whether or not we're, I think I got lost towards the end and I again so I, I can apologize. Try a motion. I'm not awake. I am I can try a motion. It might be convoluted though. <laughs> One possibility, man, Joe, is that we refer this to the, I don't know, uh, 2024 Council for determination regarding its priority and referral to TSO, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, that. Does that feel? Or you could, you could hold it for carryover items and just include it in a report of items carried to the next Council term. I'd just like to make sure we capture the discussion we've had here already. Right. With carryover, I think it has to be in referral to a committee at some point. That's why I was thinking, I think we only carry over items that are currently in committee or have been reported out of committee, but not voted on. Is that what the rules are? I think that sounds about right, Mandy Jo, but it, it does seem to me that um, we could say that uh, it would be referred to TSO in the FY 2024 term, but, um, and then just make a note for the consideration or something about whether it's a priority. And I think you meant not 2020, but 2024. Yes. <laughs> Did you... So TSO has a lot on its plate, but if for some reason it finishes, it's not 
horrible that this potentially be sitting there if it somehow finishes everything it's got. And then it, it could also just refer it to be carried over. Right. But I guess the thing that I'm still struggling with, and that is, is this even a priority for the council? Well, I know that's, uh, and, 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 and I'm I, not sure it is. Yeah. That's one reason why I, even though I have my own concerns about issues related to this, it, I, it needs to stand the test of whether it's a priority for the council. Yeah. It's not is a high any, priority. Pardon it, what, Lynn? Is there any reason we can't say something about, and what you're, Mandy Joe, you're saying based on the charter, we can't refer it back to the council for determination of priority? No, it should be I, carried our rules over. of procedure have carryover, I think, only for items that have not been acted on or. So, so here's the thing. Maybe what we could do is GOL could make a recommendation that the council refer this matter to TSO. But you as a you as a president never put it on the agenda for actual referral and then maybe it gets carried over to the next council as an item not acted upon well that's the same thing as referring it to g to tso now and then having them well, carry it over no because the next council would have to make the determination whether tso whether it should be referred to tso whereas if we acted on it to refer to tso and tso sat on it it's already in tso all right all right, so we want to make a motion that this bylaw, that bylaw 3.23 peaking or peering into the place of habitation be referred back to the council for determination about as to whether it is a priority um, of the council and leave it at that. That way this council could decide if it's a priority. And then they refer it to TSO, but with the understanding that TSO may be very clearly state, we're not doing this in this term. If the committee recommends the council refer it to TSO and the council decides that it's not important enough for TSO to spend time on it, then they would just vote against that referral. Mm -hmm. And that would be the end of consideration of any changes for that bylaw unless somebody wants to take it up in the future. Which feels okay to me. So the recommendation would be to refer the bylaw to TSO and then the GOL report would say, only do that if you're really interested in getting into it. Yeah. The TS, yeah. So and the GOL report would also indicate what it need what needs looked at. Like it's an issue of drones and people standing on public ways and doing stuff. And <laughs> it's a very complicated matter. If it goes right. to TSO, it's not easy. Right. 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 So when we, when in the TSO, in our GOL report, we need to, you know, indicate that the reason we did this referral is as observed by the bylaw review committee, um, this, this bylaw will require substantial discussion by the town council and at a committee and at a committee level. So was that a motion to refer to recommend referral to TSO, Lynn? It was a recommend recommendation to refer the bylaw to the town council. Yeah, not to. Yeah, that would seem that we should refer to the council maybe yeah. without any sort of editorializing. <laughs> what? So, so can I hear the motion again then? Because now I'm Recom really confused. Recommendation <laughs> to refer the bylaw to the town council to determine. That, that doesn't make any sense. You, re you, re you recommend to the town council that the council do something. Well. Kind of just that the council decide if it wants to refer it. Then so you just recommend that the council refer it if it. if it, To TSO and then. Yeah. 
Okay. To re and then the council, the council decides. Or... I'm sorry, Athena, can you repeat no. that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I interrupted you. To recommend the town council refer bylaw 3.23, peeking and peering into place of habitation uh, to the town services and, <clears throat> and outreach committee. That sounds good. I'll so second good. that. With, I, did, with I didn't make the, that motion. I said so. I made the motion. Lynn made it. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn made it, yeah. With, so with the one Joe change that it. the bylaw title is actually peeping, P-E-E-P-I-N-G, or peering, not peeking, according to my bylaws. <laughs> the old peeping Tom, is that where that comes from? Yes. I think so. <laughs> That's so much cuter. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> peeping. <laughs> What if you want to stand out some side somebody's house going beep, beep, okay, beep. So what, it, Athena, can you put the correct motion up there? I think it's just a motion to recommend referral to TSO. Yeah. Yeah. To the town council to to refer to TSO. Right. Recommend the town council refer bylaw 3.23 uh, to the town services and outreach committee. Okay, that's not what's on the screen. This is, I'm making notes for whoever's going to write the report. Me. Oh, okay. I got it. All right. So that motion's been made and seconded. Jennifer has her hand up. Jennifer? Yeah, so this is like if um, the next council meeting, Pat, this will be part of your report? No, yes. th this won't happen until you, we bring the whole set back. Okay, okay. That's what I want to ask. Now, the whole set back that we're working on, um, because the town council's already gotten an update from Paul, and now I have to just ride his tush to make sure he's actually doing it. But there would be, is, a, so it's, uh, it, at the point at which this is referred to the council, you know, someone, it could be one of us, whatever, could point out before it just gets sent to TSO that this would require a substantial amount of work of the committee. Yeah. Right. I, I envision this as being a report about these bylaws. And when we actually have the council meeting that all of this comes to, the report about these bylaws will be in the packet. Right, and that goes back to us looking at this in July and August for the rules and procedures and trying to bring it back whole. Mandy? Yeah, um, just a, normally a lot of these just go on consent. So I would just make it make the request that this motion that we just made to recommend referral to TSO not go on consent at all. <laughs> I, I think I you're going to find, that. yes, I, I think you're going to find that there's going to be very few bylaws put on consent. Well, I would say what we just did with the special board of appeals could easily go on consent after yeah. our first reading. But somebody will pull it off because it's zoning board of appeals and they'll panic. So. Have we voted? Uh, let's vote in case we haven't. You have not Aye. Aye. Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. Okay, four, to zero, four, four in favor, none opposed, and one absent. All right, the next thing is nuisance house, and we've done, uh, haven't oh. we? Go ahead. Sorry. I just realized that our vote to recommend referral is going to look really weird when none of us actually want, potentially want that referral to TSO when it's a 4-0 unanimous vote to refer. I, that's what I feel uncomfortable, exactly. Well, let's go undo our <laughs> vote and talk this through a little. Can we do that? Yeah, well, no, do I, I, I think I think all you need to explain in the report is the the vote in the committee was basically to give the council the choice on whether it wants to spend the time. Yeah. Not necessarily that we actually support spending that time. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that, Claire. That's important. It's really mm -hmm. this part, if the council deems it a priority, that's the yeah. key part of the recommendation, I think. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Are we comfortable with that now? Okay. Um, okay. So do uh, nuisance house, haven't we done work on nuisance house? Or is that? Well, we're doing it in CRC. Yeah, so. The council has formally referred it to CRC, all of this stuff along with everything else. So that one got it's taken like care of by GOL. Right. So we don't need to do anything. Just remove it from this list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, and the uh, uh, bylaw 3.27, I believe we're on, which is the ban of EPS phone. And I went through that and I do not believe that any further action is needed. Um, just, yeah. Oh, okay. Hang on one second. But do we need anything? We need to uh, remove it, basically just remove it from this list. Is there anything else we need to do? Just it's not being carried over. It's been taken care of. So in other words, we're letting the bylaw stand as it is. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, just, yes. I just think we need to say that. I, okay. I think what we've done in the past in GOL is um, that GOL recommended no further action. Okay. And, and vote that recommendation and just report out on it in a report, but nothing goes on the agenda at the council meeting. Okay. Mandy, you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to recommend the council take no further action on bylaw 3.27. Second. second. Uh, Lynn is the second. Okay. And let's vote on that. Jennifer? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. Now on to the, uh, are we ready to move on to 3.36 soliciting? And if, if exceptions was sent for legal review and does it uh, align with case law and should it be retained? I don't have an um, answer on that. Didn't we hear from the chief on this one? Uh, yeah. And let me see if I can find. This one was amended in 2022. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so that, should, okay. So it must have gone for a legal review in order to be amended. So we can just drop that from the list. So we should in the report say that it was amended in 2022. And I can get what the how it was amended. Yeah, so we GOL must have already dealt with it. Right. Wait, I don't even remember this. That's what yeah, I, I don't either. That's why anyway. Um but I trust Athena. If she says it was amended in 2022, but, it was. <laughs> that, that's my copy of the bylaws say that. 912. Give me a second and I'll tell you what the motion was. Okay. Oh, wait. We also rescinded peaking and peering. Completely? Consent. Yeah. Oh, my God. Proposed rescission to rescind bylaw 3.23 peaking and peering on September 22nd, 2022. September? September 22nd motion sheet. My notes say it was rescinded completely unanimously. In 2022, September 22, 2022? September 12, September 12, 2022. And it said a first reading on soliciting. So let me go to the next reading on. So that's soliciting. rescinded. Hmm. So peaking and peering was rescinded. 
So in essence, we're not referring anything unless we're referring the issue to that does it seems to me that a counselor would need to bring that issue up and say, hey, we don't have it, you know, I'm concerned about general surveillance. We don't have a bylaw. Do we need so, you know? Yeah. So soliciting the only changes we made on September 19th were to the penalty block. We basically gave the Board of License Commissioners the ability to set the fees. And which one is this? I'm sorry. Um, soliciting. Yeah. So that's the only change we made was fee setting. So it was okay. Ray fee. And then Ray fee setting. And it went to and it became the work of the um, Board of License Commissioners. Yeah. And that's in the bylaw. What's That's interesting in is that shows the change in my bylaw, but the peaking and peering doesn't show rescission in my bylaw. Yeah, mine doesn't either. I'll check with the town clerk. And... Yeah. Okay. So we don't quite know what's going on with peaking, peeping and peering. It's rescinded. It's, it, it is it rescinded. Was voted to be rescinded. Okay. So, so what, how do we take away our vote? <laughs> Uh, receiving new information, we, we yes, rescind the vote of. <laughs> I move to reconsider our vote regarding peaking and peering. And I second that emotion. Emotion. Motion. <laughs> this is. Thank you, Smokey Robinson. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I'm so sorry, po folks. This is I'm just not awake. So we have to vote if we have to vote to reconsider. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it was seconded, right? Yes, you that was. Okay. Yes. Um, Mandy? Aye. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Lynn? Yes. And I'm an I. All right. So now what are we reconsidering? So what? now you're just withdrawing your motion. Okay. Right. I'm withdrawing the motion. Okay, and do we have to, that's it. Who was the second? Pardon me? Oh, I might have been the second. You, I'll you were. Yeah. And you agree. I'm okay with the withdrawal. Okay, so we're all set with that. Uh, I think we have to vote on that. Mm -hmm. No, we no, don't. No, you withdraw it, so it's also. Okay, all right. Yeah. So we're going to just make a note that we've already rescinded that one. That takes away a messy issue. <laughs> yeah. And then if if there are counselors who want to deal with it, they can. Um, okay, the pawnbrokers, this the bylaw was changed to reflect the critique. So I'm not sure again why it was carried over and over again. So the recommendation is that there's no form further action required. Correct. And this one, uh, may I go on? Do we have to vote on three point four nine, which is the local historic districts? Did you did you want to take a vote to not to recommend no further action on? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a second on that? Second. Okay. Wait, and did you make that motion, Pat? Pat? Yes. <laughs> no Thanks. Okay. And we'll start with Jennifer. Uh, yes. Uh, Lynn. Yes. Mandy. I and I'm an I. Thank you. Um, bylaw 3.49, local historic districts. Uh, the issue seemed to be that the ZBA uses associate and the historic, the local historic district uses alternate. And um, this doesn't seem particularly important to me but the issue is to clarify and align the language. Uh, Jennifer and then Mandy. Right, so I was, I chaired the commission for a few years and I have never known them to have an alternate or an associate, but. Yeah. But okay. it's in the bylaw, so they okay. can, yeah. So, but thank you for that information. I didn't know that. Mandy? Yeah, it, it says the town manager may, he must never have exercised that option. Um, I. It's my understanding, I, I don't know if we have a, I, I've read in the paper, I thought that the commission itself was looking at potential changes to this. I could be completely wrong. 
Um, but may maybe it's not changes to this versus they were, and they put it on hold recently, but I wonder if, I mean, we could propose, it looks like it's the change of like two words, right? We could propose right. the change to associate, um, to align with the ZBA language, or we could just send this to the historic district for their thoughts. Um, if it's never been used, maybe they would delete the paragraph, right? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so should I, so maybe what's going to happen is that I will simply contact the historic commission to get feedback about this. Okay, yeah. there's, two, there's the historical commission and the local historic district commission. And yeah, no, this is the this local. Is, right, historic. so that's the one, yeah, not the historical yeah. commission. Thank you, Jennifer. Sure. Nate's the staff person. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, so I will contact them about this issue. Okay, so, Mandy? Oh, sorry. Okay, so that gets us down to the zero energy in town buildings. And um, there, there was a lot of dealing with this and GOL specifically, I think with under George reached out and they were to, uh, they don't have any issue with the definition so it doesn't seem to me that there's any real action required lynn i move that we take the council take no further action yeah. second and okay mandy aye jennifer i'm sorry which one are we on? <laughs> zero, energy. Five, one, zero energy oh okay yes okay and I'm an I and Lynn. Aye. Okay. That we've gone through the list. So that is pretty good if you ask me. So um I feel like I have two I will be working on a report and I will also um I guess my question is should I be integrating Paul's oh. into our report or just keep it separate? Mandy? So I had a question about Paul's report. Um, I think it should be kept separate, but at the same time, there were parts of that report that clearly suggested action, um, particularly the parades and public meetings one. Yes. And we had started do we talking need the council to, recommend, to refer that to us for taking that action? and making a recommendation on those recommendations or can we just take it up? And do we want to take it up? In a way- on page five, the one I'm yeah. referring to. Yeah, 3.35 parades and public meetings. Yeah. In some ways it feels important to take it up simply because again, this is a free speech issue and do we have guidelines? I mean, it, it's pretty clear that we only that we don't regulate anything except time and traffic patterns and things like that. Um, I mean, it seems logical to take it up while we're doing all this banner and rules of procedure. You know, it's like, but do we need a motion from the council to um, a motion to refer from the council or can we just do it? I don't know. Athena, do you have a hit on that? Do it. <laughs> One less agenda item, right, Athena? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that um, GOL will start working on this. Um, so if people would look at it in, in a new light, it's like, what, what are the issues that you see not necessarily right now, and then any questions that you have that we would want from KP Law or something like that. If we can get that together fairly soon, we can send it forward and then hopefully we'd get it back with uh, flags, et cetera, and public ways. Does that make sense to people? The KP Law gave us a pretty That's good a big, yeah. opinion. And so I wonder if we just need a new draft that incorporates it so we can look at 
the two together. Okay, that's true. I'm feeling willing to do that if people would like me to try. We would love you to try. I think there's a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth on that. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. Mandy Joe's becoming the public way expert. <clears throat> expert on many things. Maybe. Yes. Oh, can I don't know. It has the council being being the issuance of the uh a, a reservation. Right. So I, I I think it also goes to if it's on the town common or town way, it, is it a bylaw or is it? And then what do we do about? Are we going to um, delegate that authority to the manager? We haven't. This this one's not at all delegated to the manager in our policy delegating, whatever it's called, regarding the control and regulation of the public ways. I guess it's, since we control it. We'd have to delegate it. Unless, it, uh, or they come to us at a council meeting. You mean the uh, person who wants the who parade? Wants to, the group. Yeah. Yeah, I would rather not necessarily have that. I, I would prefer delegating the responsibility to the town manager. I mean, we've process. already delegated a bunch of it, right? Short-term yeah. reservations of the town common and public way. Right. So it's sort of a continuation, which makes sense to me, because I don't know if I want to spend council time with somebody presenting why they want to parade that basically we have to say yes to um, no matter what. Um, and the town manager knows what else is going on, how it's exactly. going to impose on staff and what else is going on. Exactly. So I guess the next question is, I, I, Athena, could do you have the bylaw itself handy? If not, I can put it up yeah. instead of the opinion. Because the I guess one of my questions is, do we need a bylaw for some of this? Under the charter, we're designate the council's designated the keeper of the public way. Mm -hmm. And so do you need a bylaw or does our policy about delegation of powers that talks about reserving the town common and parts of the public way cover it? I Except for the issue about size. But even that. We've never talked about size in our delegation policy. So it just brings another question of, do we even need this bylaw? Can, can I just also mention that, you know, we go to the town manager when people want to do road races. How different, <laughs> how different from a road race is a parade? Speed, that's it. That's it, there you go. <laughs> and most no people- we did road races. What? I had no idea we- ever had a road race oh we we do them all the time yeah where well, well anyway. the daffodil run and we've got a half marathon oh you mean that day. you mean a yeah. run i'm sorry i thought you literally met with cars never mind never mind never mind <laughs> that's next <laughs> i'm taking I'm like, lynn grace we on with my <laughs> drag races that's what we do so drag races Okay, never mind. <laughs> You're going to get her even to, into more issues now. <laughs> Lynn, you popped your hand up for a second, did you? But right now this says the, the council, you'd make reservations with the council to hold things on the common. Right. That's not, so, that's not... Right, which is why I'm wondering, should we just be deleting this bylaw completely? And, and making changes to the policy on public ways? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which we're already working on. So this yeah. is a bylaw that seems to me we've covered under public ways, but or we need to. So you would um, be recommending that the council rescind it when the council adopts the changes to the public ways policy? Yes. Is that right? 
Well, I, that's my question, I guess. So, so KP Law provided a whole lot of nice information, but do I, I guess my question is, do we need this bylaw or as keeper of the public way, the policy that we've adopted regarding control and delegation, is that sufficient? In, in essence, it conflicts with the bylaw right now. Um, and so if we wanna do it all through that policy, do we rescind this bylaw completely? which saves us one more sort of area of <laughs> what's going on, right? And I can take a look at the bylaw and the language the KP law provided to see what we might have to add to our policy. Mm -hmm. But if when we adopt that policy, we could also recommend rescinding this section completely. I think it makes sense to have all the public ways stuff in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree totally. Well, wow. so it seems like we have consensus here. Do we need to take a vote? Yeah, we need to. Is it vote. is it appropriate to take the vote now to recommend rescission, even though we haven't done anything else? And then we just put the second reading whenever we get the other. We, we just time it at the council for the same time as the public way stuff going on. I think that's when we do it, but we could take the vote now. Okay. All right. So Lynn Griesmer. Uh, uh, we don't have a mo we don't have a motion on the floor. I'll yet. make the motion to Sorry. recommend the town council rescind general bylaw 3.35 parades and public meetings. Second. Do you want to include at the time of adoption of oh with, da -da -da? with um with an effective date to match recommended the effective date of upcoming changes to the town council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. So Lynn, you were the second, correct? Yes, that's okay, correct. And I, I agree with that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a vote. Mandy? Aye. Jennifer? Yes. Lynn? Aye. And I'm an aye. We're just moving to clean up these bylaws and get rid of half of them. I know. <laughs> well, and, and let me just suggest, depending on what the agenda looks like for the uh, 26th, we might do since we seem to be just about done we might do this then but you still had the animal one to talk to carol about yeah yeah and we and we still need to make sure we get everything back from kp law that we need and right. the local okay. historic commission right yeah so it, it's ambitious to think we're going to be doing that so take i just take back what i just said you could do a first reading if it's a light agenda and the bylaws all need second readings yeah. And so a first reading it's, gets half of it done and then I'll, it just sits there. Yeah, I'll know better today whether it's going to be there's there's two issues coming um up and we're trying to juggle when they're going to be on the agenda. I know that sounded mysterious but I didn't mean it. And you so can't say what they we vote on the oh, No, I'll, I'll be glad to tell you but go ahead. The 12th, Jennifer. Jennifer. The 12th is the budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The 12th is the budget. And there's several actions with that. But based on the meeting Monday night, I don't I don't see anything arising, but there were four counselors absent. Uh the uh finance committee is getting ready to take up on Friday the issue of counselor compensation. Uh, and then the town manager is developing a report with Sean about. ARPA money. And then at some point very soon, AHRA will be coming forward with its recommendations. Okay. That's kind of where yeah. I see. The What's the second issue uh, that's coming up on? You said there were two issues. Those Budget. are it. it. It's really, I, it, you know, counselor compensation may create a certain amount of conversation. Uh, the issue, but more importantly, I think the AHRA 
report and recommendation is going to be a big one. And yeah. I think that there may be some considerable conversation around the ARPA report. <laughs> I bet. ARPA report. Okay. All right. Is there anything else in Paul's <laughs> disposition report that we want to look at right now? I have to find it. I, I, I had it earlier and then I didn't. I, I feel I'm like sorry. everything else had still working on. Right. The staff is still working on recommendations. And it was right. just that one that sort of had an actual action so, to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. It well, seems I guess there was what about one with the licenses seven? and permits, this 3.7. had an update. Did anybody see anything specifically that wasn't supported or that we need to look at in terms of changing a term or anything like that? I did. I, I don't think the town attorney recommended any changes. Yeah, I no, didn't. No, I don't see that they did either. And, um, you know, the, the big thing that's changed since then is the court case regarding um, back taxes. And I don't, um, that didn't seem to be part of. Um, Lynn, can you give me a brief uh, outline of what the court case is on back? Yeah, um, the court ruled um, that when a town takes property for back taxes, mm -hmm. they can they may only keep the amount yeah, the yeah, equivalent yeah, gotcha. to the back tax. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the, the rest must go to the owners. Yeah, which makes total sense. Totally. I mean, I guess the question would be, if it applies to building permits and all, do you add it to exemptions or not, right? Hmm. Right. But that was not the question KP Law was asked, but, no, right. yeah. but the bylaw itself has, a, has nine exemptions, nine licenses that are exempt from this. Right. Well, it does the uh, the t our bylaw already allows us to not deny any application, revoke or suspend, or um, who to any person, business, etc., who has neglected or refused to pay any local taxes. So yeah. I don't think there's anything we need to change there either. Or yeah, I mean, I guess the, the that that's the question. I don't think there were any changes. Recommended. It didn't seem like it. I think this review was done out before that court ruling, but I don't know. Do you want me to? I don't. I don't see it as an issue. I, it's actually something I'm going to bring up with Paul when I meet with him. Okay. And so, then, then, then if there is an issue, which somehow or other doesn't feel like it, you would you could let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Other than that, other than that. It's still in Paul's court for most of the things in his memo. Okay. Well, the only other thing on the agenda is to look at the um, town's um, rules um, of procedure. Yes. Sorry, so so you're not recommending no changes. This is going to be. Oh no, we should do that. Oh, on that one for Paul. 
yeah. yeah. Is this, are we waiting for Lynn to talk to Paul or what's happening next with 3-7? No, we're going ahead with this. Yeah. You're gonna recommend no further action? Yes. So, so it was referred to Paul to, to request something from the town attorney and right. he's done his update. Right. So it's not sitting in GOL right now. Except he referred this back to GOL. No, he didn't. Geo, it was a GOL recommendation. The council referred it to the town manager. So, which we did. Um, right. That was it. That was in like 2021. Or so you're saying if, if Paul wants any changes, he should come to us. Is that what you're saying, Mandy Joe? Yeah, I, I think his his update or whatever. If he wants, yeah. I think he needs to provide the changes if he deems that changes are necessary. But it doesn't seem like there would be from what we right. have in KP law. Whereas the other one that parades specifically recommended changes. So I felt like. Okay. So the committee agrees the town manager would bring changes if he wants to hmm. yes if he, yeah, if he deems them necessary or some schmoogie way of saying it um thank you it is it's about 11 o'clock it's not quite and i'm going to make a suggestion that we call for public comment um and then I'd like to end the meeting early. Um, let's, let's approve the minutes. There's no okay. Yeah. So, um, Lynn, you want to make a recommendation to, or the motion to approve the minutes? Um, were the minutes in the packet? I don't think they were. Oh, then we can't do it. So we have to do it. <laughs> that was oh, basically sorry. my question. <laughs> I'm so convinced I'm missing things that I, I didn't see it in SharePoint. That doesn't mean they weren't online at the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't see them to put them into SharePoint, but I haven't looked in the last couple of days. So I did this a, a week ago before I left. I'm so sorry about that. I have them. Um, I must have just failed to put them in the packet. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. We can approve them at our next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or put them oh, in the well, packet and approve them. No, and Pat, you should officially call for public comment and note that there's nobody in the audience. Yeah, no, I know there's nobody there. Anyway, at this point in our meeting, I would like to officially call for public comment. If there are any uh, people who would like to make public comment, they should raise their hand now. And seeing no hands raised, I'm going to call an end to the public comment period. Um, I would very much like, Jennifer, go ahead. Continue, I don't know if this, I just want to just make a comment that yesterday the um, MMA had a webinar on the court opinion, I'm not clear, I don't yeah. have the names, you know, about um, public comment. I so signed Southboro. up for, yeah, Southboro, didn't get to watch it, but um, you can listen to it. I can send the link if that's helpful. Oh, please do, yeah, Okay. please do. That would be very helpful. I had the same problem, Jennifer. I didn't get to go. Yeah. Send the link. All right. So I'm going to make a uh, suggestion that we end the meeting now and that we move uh, looking at uh, uh, both the Southboro case, the public dialogue, public comment, public you know conduct issue, and then Rule Six uh, as part of our next meeting, if that's comfortable with people, because I'm not being it's yeah Does we hate that, ending meetings early i know <laughs> <laughs> no i just feel like i failed you guys and i'm sorry but i'm we just did. so we out of a very productive meeting yeah, this was a very actually good. yeah well that's because you guys kept it going <laughs> okay it anyway so see i am uh, going to end the june 7th gol meeting i'm adjourning at 1102 a.m and thank, thank you, you all thank, thank you, you. Get Bye. some sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah.